Hey yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Tenyo Scene One and today Um we're gonna Yeah just uh work on our multiplayer game which we were working on last time. Uh so yeah, it's uh, it's been a while as usual. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while as usual, man. But yeah, so basically uh, before we get started, uh you know, I'll I'll I'll, I'll try to kind of be slightly more fast in this tutorial. I'll, I'll try to explain things at the same time, but you know. Uh, basically, uh, I, I wanted to talk about the community, uh, which, which, um, you know, which, which means uh, YouTube, which means Discord, which means the Facebook page, right? So basically, a lot of people messaged me on my YouTube uh, account, my channel. Uh, I usually don't read those messages. It's just that you know YouTube doesn't like me very much when it comes to those, but but yeah. So um, I encourage you to message me at my on my on my Facebook page. Okay, just you can contact me there directly, or you can join the Discord server, which I believe is a really good way uh, of of like staying in touch with uh, you know with the people around you, like your fellow developers as well. And you can also contact me directly there, talk to me directly there. Uh, I, I hang out there from time to time as well, you know, maybe we can, uh, it's cold and stuff, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun, though. But yeah, you can find uh, lots of free assets there and contribute to the community and support them as well. And uh, yeah, you know, all your queries, when I'm not available, uh, you can just uh, ask your fellow developers, uh, ask for help and, and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, and I just realized that this chair is supposed to be there. What's with that. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, that's that. Let's let's continue on with the, with the tutorial and let's get started. Shall we? All right, so uh, basically this time around, uh, let's open Unity first of all. This time around, we just have uh, certain things to cover. Um, I have to, like for, for like after so long, I actually planned stuff out. So yeah, it feels good, man. But anyways, so basically where we left all was with this weird map, right? <laughs> yeah, we just uh, we we covered um, we covered certain functions, and I think there's a cat outside who's trying to fight. Yo, cat, no. Like there's this cat who visits me every day, like around like 5 p.m. or something, and and there's this male cat who like visits around the same time and starts fighting with the other cat. It's it's weird, man. I don't like it. I I must I must do something. But anyways, uh, that aside, I don't think you guys really want to listen to my story that way. But all right, so what we covered last time was just connecting to the uh, Photon servers uh, using some sort of version con uh, version name here. So you can just na add a name or just version, you know, string game version, basically. And, you know, we, we also talked about some methods which are called when, uh, you know, when you're connected or something. So, for example, on joined lobby is called when you join the lobby. And you can do various things. Like, for example, you can have a, an input text where the player can input his name. Um, or you can, you know, alternatively just log in the player through your own custom database or play fab beforehand and use that that's another thing but yeah and then we have on joined room which is when we're actually spawning the player uh alternatively you could maybe do something like add a timer of some sort like when you join the room uh maybe there's a spawn button maybe there's a team selection button uh and then after you've selected the team maybe there's like a round timer so the player can only spawn once around, things like that. You know, you can really jump into detail there. But uh, for the time being, we're just gonna keep everything simple, right? So that's all. And just disabling the camera, lobby camera, and we're just updating the text on the update. Again, it's for testing only, just so we can see our current uh, connection status. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get back into Unity. And uh, yeah, we also set up a player prefab, which uh, which has a photon view component and stuff like that. So. The first thing I would like to talk about today is the photon view component. So basically, the things which we're, we're going to cover today basically would be the photon view component, which is one of the most important, most of, one of the most essential uh, components in photon, uh, especially if you're creating a real-time networking game, which in this case is a real-time one. Real-time basically means any FPS game or you know like that, that kind of uh, where, where there's like 
instant player actions are required, stuff like that, you could say. And uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to test this game. Uh, so we're going to have, we're going to build the game and we're going to have another uh, application, another build opened up. And we're going to try testing both, both of those, right? So the player here and the player in the other play build and see if it's actually syncing and stuff. And we're going to also cover um, some local and global functionality, right? So yeah, uh, let's let's do it, right? So the first thing we have is the photon view component. Now the photon view component is is basically you can you can think of it as this as like uh, something which actually gives this object its properties, uh, its network properties. You can say so anything which you want to do over network uh, will have to pass through this component, right? Uh, this component has uh, it tells you the owner and it tells you which view ID. View ID is like a unique ID. Uh, which is assigned to every object which has the photon view component uh, so you can actually find players or objects using searching for view id you know that way also if, if you might have noticed i have actually added a, a capsule um graphics so we can see the player over network so the way we would do that you know i actually i'm just going to do it right now so by default it was something like this right so what you do is you just right click and you go to 3d object capsule and that there you go right and you can just remove the capsule collider make sure you do that uh, otherwise the capsule uh, the collider on this object and this would most likely just you know start messing up and stuff so let's remove that okay and yeah basically we have a visual representation and i'm going to call this uh graphics right so uh let's apply it you know, we're, we're going to apply every time just so we can apply the changes to our resources prefab because we're not using this directly we're using responding to the the object from the from the resources folder all right <clears throat> so as you can see the view id ranges from one one to 99 so you can have only thousand uh, not not exactly only but a thousand objects with a with photon view component on them uh, so you can have uh, that, that you know that this could include players or something. You can also have like control multiple objects using only a single photon view, uh, and yeah. So you, then you have like the owner. In this case, it's the scene. Um, so you know you could have a scene as the owners. For example, if you have scene objects, like maybe you have a uh, an animal crate or something, or maybe you have something else. You know, it's a scene object, right? It's not owned by the player. Uh, when you when you spawn the object, you, you know when you when it's your own object, basically the owner will be the player, the client, master server in this case, which you, which is us, right? You also have like a fixed uh, takeover and request. This is for for example, if you have cars in your game or things like that, which which would be, uh, you know, which require player input, right? Now, once you enter the car, what you do is you actually become the owner of that car, right? Something like takeover or maybe request if you don't if you want to prevent uh, like uh, like we can say forceful takeover right so if you want to prevent that maybe you can go for a request and ask the other player okay, that can I use your car all right if, if it's owned by the other player otherwise you can go with takeover and you know if it's a scene object it will become your your object like you'll become the owner of that you know stuff like that stuff like uh, yeah so we, we also have a um, <clears throat> observe options now I kind of forgot what this does but uh, if I remember correctly um, there's like reliable data co compressed, uh, delta compressed, and what this does is basically, you know, any incoming data or, or data which is being sent, um, it will be like, it will make sure that it's always sent and always received, so there's no missing packets in between, missing data in between, right? But it's slower, and it's not sent as often. This is mostly recommended for strategy-based games. So some things, so some games which are not like exactly real time, you can say. So where where you know you do one action, you wait for the other player to to you know do whatever he wants to. Something like uh, Pokemon, for example, you can go with. Yeah, there's unreliable. Unreliable is something like um, like data is sent and received. It's, it's, it's like quite often and fast. But the thing is that there's a chance that it could be packet loss or there could be data you know lost when it's being sent and received. Uh, this is this is uh, better for uh, or good for you can say uh, real time games like FPS and stuff. Uh, unreliable and change is basically the same thing as unreliable, but what it does is it only sends data and receives data when it's changed, which is uh, obviously as you might have guessed, it's a lot more better, right? It's better than that. We're going to be using unreliable and change. Uh, so yeah, and observed components is basically any component uh, which you actually want to like sync over network for example you would add you would basically you know observe it right for example if i want to go ahead i'm going to sync uh the transform component i would just put it there and you can see it, it gives me the option transform serialization 
So if I want to sync position, rotation, only scale, only rotation, position, all stuff like that, right? Uh, however, this will be really jittery. So we'll basically have to add a low pass, as you call it. So we lerp between two positions. The one we receive over network in our current position. You know, we'll get into that and you'll you'll basically see what I mean. Also, this would probably not work for other objects. As you can see, it all, all, all like by default, it just changes to unreliable and change as well. And I can't remove it. Why is that? Oh well, that's great. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, there's also rigid body and sync the. Uh, I don't think you can really sync this. Yeah, like you can't sync it directly or anything, but yeah. Right. So, anyways, um, yeah, we've talked a lot. So, I suppose we're already halfway through or something. So, yeah, what what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna sync this uh, our player's position and rotation so that the other guy can actually see us. Uh, and see us move and stuff but before we do you'll see that there's gonna be an issue right uh, I'm gonna show you that uh, in a moment so what happens is basically uh, let's let's actually do it instead of talking much so transform photon transform view component now this is one of the components which you would use normally to sync position rotation or scale um, uh, and or scale when it comes to that so this is this component uh, handles all that with interpolation with uh, low pa low pass filters and stuff so it's it's really good right so it has options like teleporting so for example if uh, if our current position like over network is this but the position we just sent was like here or something then we're gonna actually we're not gonna lerp towards it we're gonna actually teleport ourselves there this instant teleportation you know prevent it to prevent syn syncing issues like when you see in games where, where players are really extremely lagging you see them teleporting around all over the place sometimes you know uh, so they might be using something like this this is useful though if uh, if there is like a late uh, data request or something like that for example when there's an interpolate option now this goes this, this has its own set of stuff right so this component it goes quite in detail and i'll most likely not cover it in this tutorial but i'll just cover the basic points like the interpolate option uh there's a synchronization value so if you're calculating you're sending data using wasd keys and shift and you're actually calculating the vector position the direction the player is supposed to move you'll most likely update uh, synchronize the values using script then that would be more accurate over network and work would, would, would work better uh, normally, but for for the sake of this video, we're going to be actually using lerping or fixed speed. Uh, fixed speed is just vector three dot move towards function, just tries to uh, smoothly move between two positions. And lerping is kind of the same thing, but it's more of a linear thing. I'm not sure exactly what's the difference between move, move towards or lerping, but I'll get to you. This is basically linear interpolation. Uh, interpolate, uh, interpolation. Oh God. <laughs> okay, my bad. So we're going to be using the. Uh, uh, we're going to use lerp. And we're just gonna set this to 10, so we have a decent speed. Uh, you can go with five as well, but 10 is just kind of better in this case. Uh, so again, rotation. I'm just gonna leave that as default. You can go with the uh, lerp or rotate towards the game. Same thing there. And uh, and yeah. So what we do want to do now before we actually put this into play, what we can't, which what we should do is we should observe this component, right? So we just drag and drop it there, and it's now observed. Right, it, it says like uh, FPS controller one photon transfer view, so we know this. So what is what, what this is gonna do? This is actually giving us the position, right? This is, for example, you can say uh, handling data being sent and received, or like only tr the transform and and rotation, uh, like two values being sent and received, right? This is in fact uh, this is actually responsible for, you know for actually sending and receiving data over network right this this only does it all locally but this actually sends it receives it over network right so this is really important if you don't observe the component nothing's going to happen data is literally not going to be sent over network or received or anything so let's just apply that so all as you can see you know the bold uh characters are now not no longer bold i suppose <laughs> so yeah that means it's applied save the scene and let's remove this character from our object or from our scene god God, I'm, I'm sorry, I really can't speak today. Alright. And I'm actually thinking of making mini tutorials as well, so perhaps I can make like a tutorial only on photon view component or, or only on transform view component. You know, like the five minute tutorials or something, so I could just explain that, those, you know, for people who are actually looking out. Now, let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, and, and yeah, so. Anyways, nothing really much happened, like, alright, so let's go and actually build the game. So to do that, we, we can just go to File, Build Settings, and 
you can see I have a scene when it, like the scenes in build option. Now normally you wouldn't have that. You would it would be something like this. So you can just go like uh, select add open scenes, or you can also go to the scenes folder and just drag and drop it there. We already have it there now. Okay. And I've also changed my uh, architecture to uh, to be to work with 32 bit and 64 bit. All right. So yeah, you can just you know select uh, which which target platform you're working for. Um, and yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and build the game. So I'm just gonna build it. Actually, I should have clicked on build and run. Okay, well, anyways, so that should not take too long. Uh, I I hope. <laughs> Okay, that's great. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna play this. Now, if I press the play button, this this um, you know a client or this build right here is gonna be the master server, right? It's connected to a. Uh, okay, this is messed up. The text is messed up. We can fix that later, but yeah. Right. So if I go back, uh, my bad. If I go back to Unity, and I play it from there as well, you'll see there's gonna be a massive issue, right? See what that what happened? You see that? It just messed up. All right, you can see. You can see I'm trying to move like in this build down, like in the bottom right, and it's not allowing me to move because what's happened actually. They might say what's happening, like the like I'm controlling the other guy on different builds, right? It's like a third person game now, and it's it's really weird, you know. So what's actually happened is both the cameras have swapped. All right, both the the objects had a camera, right? And what's happened is that they've been swapped. Uh, this guy has has you know is like it's like the like the, the unity is confused which which player uh, holds the master camera it also say, tells you there are two audio, uh, audio listeners it's actually not the audio it's a problem but yeah <clears throat> so if i have two characters in the scene for example uh, if i just go there you know i can have two characters and and like this character is like that and then there's this character and if i delete this character uh, Unity will, will automatically, uh, you know, go back to the to the other camera here. If I drag and drop this character, Unity will go to the the newer character's camera, right? So whenever a new player spawns in, and Unity is gonna change, um, like the camera towards that one. So this is not gonna work properly, basically, right? It's gonna be terrible, absolutely terrible, right? So what, how how do we go about fixing it? Also, there's this is not the only issue. The another issue is that V can control both the players. So if I press the WASD keys, you were seeing how both the players were moving. Like one player was uh, was like staying at, in one position thanks to the uh, network uh, synchronization and stuff. The other player was our own local player, right? So we want to make sure that input is only limited to our own player. Things which we own should only receive input, right? So let's see what we do, how we can do that, right? Okay, so... Um, Alright, so for that, let's create a new script, which will basically be, which will basically be like uh, responsible for handling, uh, you know, for for checking. Now, before I get into, it, let's let's try playing the game once more, and I'll show you how we're gonna differentiate between local and global stuff, right? So, so right now I have a player, right? If I click here, and I scroll down, as you can see, it says controlled locally, master. So I am basically controlling this object this photon view component right uh, if I have for example uh, let me just move this uh, the way okay so if I have, for example like this cube and I add like a photon view component to this so photon view right and I try playing the game right you can see control locally is turned off by default and I can't turn it on because you know there's an owner which is fixed if I go ahead and most likely take uh, Set it to take over. I think I think it's gonna work. Nah, it's, it's gonna probably work through script. Uh, but yeah. So you can see I can't control this. This is owned by the scene. If another guy, uh, you know, joins my game, my room, uh, he's I, I won't be able to control him either. Accordingly to the photon view component. So photon view component differentiates between all the local objects and the global ones. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a new script, uh, and we're gonna use that. Uh, you know that boolean that, that thingy uh, the local control thingy and we're gonna actually make use of that and we're gonna differentiate between local and global uh, variables uh, and functionality so let's create a new script and call it player network I hope I'm not being too vague here but yeah also uh, one thing I mentioned in the last tutorial we really don't need this part here you know let's just take that out from the uh, photon network manager uh, yeah 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and let's go ahead and create certain functions. So we, we don't need any of those. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to create um, <clears throat> what should be create. <laughs> Right, we're gonna create things like camera, right? So private, uh, let's make it a serialized field. Ah, gaming. Okay, serialized field. Private transform uh, camera. Right, or we can just make it like player camera or something. Now this is just uh, solely my, oh my god. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I should not type that way for you guys. You, you'll probably find it confusing, but that's just one of my, uh, personal preferences. I know it's a terrible personal preference, but you know. <laughs> so, so we have a player camera, right? So we don't want the player camera to be enabled. The other guy's camera, right? So the uh, the guy who joins us. We also don't want a certain script to be enabled, right? So we don't want to be able to control the other guy, right? The other player. So what we can do for that is we can simply disable the script, right? So if we disable it for the other person, not our our local or our you know control character what we can do is we can you know this would basically work around and allow us to you know fulfill whatever we want to do right so we're gonna create something like um, private now this is just for the sake of it but I'm gonna create like a, an array of mono behaviors uh, which is good which we're gonna call uh, player control scripts this is this can contain any script which you may or may not want to disable uh, like, like which you want to disable my bad uh, so any scripts which you want to disable over network for the other player uh, for the non-local player it, this this array will hold all those and what we want to do is now uh, we actually want to create certain functions like, uh, like actually we need a start function I don't know why I removed it <laughs> void start right uh, just like naming it private so what we're gonna do, we also need one more thing before we go, and what would it, what that would be is private photon view, uh, photon view, right? So this is just the view component, the local view component. Uh, so we can just write photon view equals get component, uh, photon view, right? So we just, we're just getting this script will be present on the player, and we're just getting the uh, photon view component just right there, right? Um, now one thing which some people might say is why use that when you can say. Uh, you know, photon dot uh, I think mono behavior because mono behavior basically has a built-in um, you know this this script basically has the built-in photon view uh, as you can see it's it's a variable right uh, we don't even need that it's just a variable just there if I'm not wrong yeah I can, I can just write that and directly access it without saying get component now the reason I don't do that I'm not exactly sure but um but I think I think actually storing reference to the photon view component locally in the script is much more faster um, rather than just accessing it through that other way. But I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure about that. I might be wrong about it. But let's see. Okay, so we're getting the photon view component, and then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna like start uh, checking for stuff. So I'm gonna create a new function and I'm gonna call this initialize, right? And let's uh, let's play, uh, execute that function. Now, what this is gonna do is it's gonna handle um, wait initialize. Shit, did I did I actually write typed it correctly? Because I feel like I didn't initialize. Initialize. <laughs> uh, this is awkward. <clears throat> My bad. Okay, so right, uh, what we're gonna do then is we're actually gonna go ahead and. Uh, we're gonna this this function is gonna handle like local and and like locally controlled and not locally controlled ones. So what we can do is we can say okay if photon view dot is mine. That's that's any that's, that's literally the only thing which we need to to write to check for. So if it's ours, we really don't need to do anything in this case, I suppose for now. If it's not ours, what we want to do is we want to say player camera dot set active uh, dot game object dot set active should probably make this. Uh, store this as a game object by default so let's store this as a game object rather than transform right so we just uh, you know I disable the player camera and what we do is we iterate through all the player controlled scripts like we use a for loop we go like player controlled scripts dot length um, and and we just say like actually we can just go for uh, use it for each loop I suppose we really don't need indexing this but in this case so for mono behavior m in um, player controller controller scripts, 
uh, we could say m dot enable equals false. Uh, this is this basically like allows us to do kind of the same thing as uh, as for loop but uh, without indexing. So like for example, if you just want to handle do the same exact thing for every single uh, component or every single uh, yeah object in a list, you can just use this right. So what we're doing is we're disabling like we we can say go like uh, handle functionality for non local character right and disable its camera disable its control scripts so we're disabling the control script for the other player in this case and if it's ours we can you know just uh, uh do stuff here you know for now we are just gonna leave it the way it is but yeah so yeah that's that's basically all we need right and we can just go back uh, and hope uh and we can just hope that it works <laughs> Because it's been so long, so long since I made a tutorial at least. So I'm not sure if I'm uh, really. It's probably gonna take some time to get back into this. So let me just drag and drop this character here. I just had a I gave it a player uh, network script, uh, and what I want to do, I want to basically give it the first person character, which is the player camera, and I'm gonna give it a controller script. So I can just drag and just open this up. I can just drag the uh, first person uh, controller into. This, uh, this array is correct. And that's it. And we can just uh, apply and remove him from the scene, right? And let's go ahead and build the game. To quickly build the game, you can press Control B, uh, or you can just simply go to like build and run, or like directly from here. So let's build and run, right? And uh, and we'll just see what happens. I hope I did not miss anything. I feel like I missed something. I don't know. I really have a bad feeling about this one. <laughs> let's hope I didn't. I definitely did though. Okay, so we're gonna play this. Uh, this is uh, so we just join in a room, right? And voila, we see the other guy. And we're not, as you can see, I'm moving in the screen, and I can see myself moving there, right? And and I, I can also see the other guy. And there's no jittering, there's no camera issues, and uh, you know the input is handled uh, differently, right? So I can do this uh, kind of the same thing. So if I just try switching between them, you can see that it's working, right? Uh, that was pretty long. I'm sorry for that, guys. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I hope you guys actually understood what was the purpose of this, right? I really was not up for the tutorial today, was I? Like, as in, I wasn't able to explain properly. I'm sorry about that. I'm still not sure if I spelled that wrong. I don't, uh, right, I mean, I don't know, for some reason. I, you know, one of those days where you just forget, like, how do you spell this all of a sudden, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think this is that kind of day for me. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're just uh, getting the component on, um, you know, we're just getting the photon view component on the player. Then we're executing the initialized function. We're checking if this photon view is ours. If it's not ours, uh, we can, we can, I know we can directly do this like this, you know, and just remove the else. But uh, we might use the if, uh, you know, photon view that is mine sometime later. But yeah. So if it's not ours, then what we can do is we can just uh, disable our camera. And we can just uh, you know disable all the control scripts so for the other players and that's it so if, if you have multiple scripts for example like you have like three four control scripts you can just uh, fill them up inside of it but what if you do you don't want to disable the entire script but just certain features from the script right so you know the best way for networking is to handle most of the stuff locally and only send data over network which is really essential and important right now I can now for example position and rotation I can send them it's important, right? But things like, for example, what if I have uh, like an inventory system, right? And I want to maybe handle certain things locally, like the input, like uh, like picking stuff up, like dropping stuff, like uh, uh, stacking stuff. I don't want to handle that over network, right? And but but I do want to handle certain things over network, like uh, like when I drop something, I do want it to appear over network. And things like that. For those you want to disable the entire script. Rather, you would just block out certain functions uh, or certain methods using the photon view that is mine or, or perhaps some other things as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, and yeah, um, that was a long one. We, we are also supposed to cover uh, on photon serialized view in the next tutorial. So, you know, if you guys are up for uh, some advanced education <laughs> or advanced knowledge, you just want to go and... Um, uh, study that function by our own. You're welcome to do so. 
Uh, but we're gonna cover this and we're gonna this this is basically you know responsible for sending and receiving data so this is what's behind the scenes in this photon transform view as well and uh, yeah so we can for example if you want to sync the held or network you can use this component and you know send and, and receive data so yeah we're gonna cover that in the next tutorial and I hope you guys enjoyed and you know you can just uh, contribute you can just join the uh, discord community uh and, and i'll be there and yeah i've been quite busy but yet again i'll be there you know in, in fact i just closed discord like a couple minutes ago i think did i yeah i just i don't really want um what you can say like uh you know i just try to keep distractions away during tutorials it's best to not have uh, skype or facebook or anything opened so yeah all right uh and uh, and yeah it's been 30 minutes Ooh, that was a long tutorial <laughs> for something which we barely covered anything i'm really sorry about that guys please don't sue me but yeah um i hope you guys enjoyed and um and yeah I'll, i'm thinking like let me know if i should start working on mini tutorials you know explain certain things so maybe we can we can have like a tutorial sprint where we'll cover lots of things but uh, what I would do is I would just tell you to instead of watch this particular mini tutorial if you want more regarding, you know, um, you, if you want to learn more about certain things. For example, for the photon view component, you know, I could just tell you that instead of instead of putting that part inside of this video, I can say watch this other video, which is five minutes long, which you might find easier, you know. But then again, uh, just let me know what you guys think. So mini tutorials long tutorials if you want to be just you know just lay back relax and uh eat something maybe you know sip your tea just have fun just listen like i can do some asmr actually i won't do that thing i'm sorry <laughs> anyways hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you in the next one peace out i should really start uploading weekly tutorials